Thanks for being here. Subscribe to Cheating Stories Best, so you don't miss new stories. The wife decided to leave her husband, but I think the husband only got better. At the end of today's story we will find out exactly what happened, listen to the end. Enjoy the story! John looked at me with a grin that only five beers could produce. So, you're letting them drive you out of town? Don't get even. Nobody's driving me out of town, brother. This promotion was nine months in the making. I just happened to get it after we broke up. What time is it outside the window now? 9.12, I will live in the sunny south and it looks like my house will be on the lake if my proposal is accepted. While you're freezing your fifth place here, I'll be sitting on the dock waiting for Mr. Big, you an idiot, I laughed. John loves to fish but hates ice fishing. I would really like to take him and his wife, Adele, with me. He is like a brother to me, and his wife is an angel, I thought. Just then, his angel appeared, taking off his coat and ordering a glass of wine. God, I froze my fifth place there. Before I had time to think, I blurted out. God forbid, she blushed and giggled. In a drunken stupor, I told her that her fifth place was the gold standard by which all women should be judged. Her hugs told me she wasn't angry, but she still broached the subject from time to time, especially when we were in a restaurant or club. What about that one over there? I looked at the quite attractive woman and grinned. Nope, flat enough to be ideal but still a hot thing, it was our usual joke. If she didn't bring it up, then John did, just to watch me flush red. John kissed her and said that we are planning my revenge. She frowned, and I laughed. You should keep him away from these sights, they give him strange thoughts. I don't plan on doing anything stupid enough to land me in jail or go broke. In another two months, I will be living in grand style, and she will still be in this tundra with Baba. Well, that is really with Baba, could it get any more trivial than that? I laughed. Besides, I think I've gotten along pretty well with them, don't I? It was as sad and stereotypical as it gets. I returned home in the middle of the day and found them in bed. I admit, for a minute, the idea of murder flashed through my head, but then I calmed down and took out my phone. They were in their own little world and didn't even know I was there. When I had enough photographs, it dawned on me that Martha hates cold and damp. It was snowing lightly, and the temperature was about minus seven. I removed the cap from the faucet in the garage and connected the hose to it. We live outside the city, and we have a well, and at this time of year, the water in it is almost icy. The hose was long enough to reach the bedroom door, and I waited for the climax, and then turned the water on full. He ran out of the house in a snowstorm completely without clothes. The police arrived, and they threw him into a car, and if it weren't for my neighbor, I would have been in big trouble. He told them that Bubba had threatened me and it was true. The sergeant just grinned and asked if I wanted to press charges. I refused and even allowed him to enter the house and take my clothes. My dear wife was lying on the sofa, covered with all the blankets we had and still shaking. The policeman's grin grew even wider. Bubba received a free trip to the hospital to undergo psychotherapy. Before night fell, everyone in our small town already knew about the incident. I stayed overnight with my mother, calling Martha and telling her to leave the house in three days. She persisted, but my mother called the police again, and since the house was in her name, she was forced to leave. The divorce was not pleasant, and she almost had a nervous breakdown when she found out that the house did not belong to us. In the end, I gave her a car that she simply had to have in half of everything we had saved up, and by we, I mean me. As a result, she ended up in a small apartment living on a lump sum which I paid in lieu of alimony and trying to find a job while she still could. John chuckled at the memory. Yes, he will never survive this, and what your mother did is simply priceless. Baba has become a laughing stock every time he says too much, where he works, they threaten to throw buckets of water on him. The women look at him and giggle. He pondered for some time, and after drinking enough alcohol, he came up with a brilliant plan. He will go to my mother's house and will whip on my fifth place to prove how terrible he is. He knocked on the front door and shouted to my mother to make me come out and look him in the eyes, otherwise, he would take out everything that was on it. The downside to this plan was that I had already moved back to my old house. She calmly told him to wait at the door, and like a true idiot, he did so. A few minutes later, 
she came out from behind the house with her garden hose and doused him. She already called the police. The police picked him up and put him in the rear compartment of the car. He begged to be covered with a blanket or to turn on the heat, but they wouldn't turn it on until everyone had been interviewed. The interview took what seemed like an eternity, he turned blue, and then the doctors were called. They wrapped him in a blanket and took him to the hospital. He was again treated for hypothermia, and the police who questioned him made it clear that if anything like this happened again, they would react very slowly. He was then arrested for threats, trespassing, attempted assault, and being drunk in public. When he was examined at the hospital, his level of alcohol intoxication was three points above the legal limit. It took him three weeks to get out of prison, by which time he had lost his job, but he has a new nickname. Baba was gone forever, his new name was Hoser. It had the meaning of break, he did it all himself, and I couldn't have asked for a better ending. He left the city under cover of darkness, and no one ever knew where he went. When Hoser left, Martha found herself with the prospect of living on her own and tried to do everything possible to achieve reconciliation, but it was too late. Besides, I had already moved, having become firmly accustomed to the new place. Mom said she got engaged again a week after the divorce became final. She never liked paying her own bills, she must have been very upset when her old house was put up for sale. She tried to persuade her new lover to propose, but he refused. Mom made good money from the sale and gave it to me so that I could buy a house in a new place. It was almost enough to buy the lake house I had my eye on, and when all the paperwork was done, I still owed less than the price of a used car, which I planned to pay off in three years. A few weeks later, there was a knock on my door, and my mother appeared on the doorstep with three suitcases. Bring them inside. I'll live here until I find a new home. What do you think? I will stay in this frozen wasteland while you yourself live here in the sun. Besides, you're my only child, and I don't want to be 500 miles away when the grandchildren arrive. My grandparents died and left her their house, brick in with two floors, with an area of 186 square meters on a plot of 80 acres. She got her house and her divorce from my father, who disappeared before the first child support payment was due. Mom was quite smart and constantly updated documents. When he was found four years later, he owed a lot of money. The judge forced him to pay it all back, adding 15% a month to the accrued alimony, which he now had to pay, otherwise, he would go to prison. When I graduated from college, he still owed her for two years, and she never forgave him. I probably got my vindictiveness from her. When my grandmother died, she moved into her house, giving me her old one. Now I'm glad that we never completed the paperwork. There was a new housing development on the ridge above the lake, and she found a nice two-bedroom retirement cottage that just happened to be right across from me. I noticed an expensive pair of binoculars on her veranda, and she blushed, saying she was into bird watching. Five months later, to everyone, I was still a Yankee who had moved into the old Smith house, but mom was just one of the girls. In less than three months, she knew all the gossip in the area. She brought her new friends into this, and suddenly I began to receive invitations to meet my mother's new friends. And by pure coincidence, there just happened to be a nice young lady who was not in a relationship at the moment. Most of the time, they were just as confused as I was, but I made some good friends, girlfriends who didn't mind showing up in a bikini and staying the night. A year later, a woman came to me looking for her sister, whom I was dating. I haven't seen her for months, but now she's disappeared, and her family is looking for her. She got out of the car, and I was surprised to see that with her were two children, twin boys who had just turned six years old. She had a disapproving expression on her face, but a short conversation calmed her down. I closely watched the children, and they closely examined the pier. Would you like to contact him? They grabbed my hands and dragged me along. Their mother called out, Hey, did I give you permission to get close to the water? I looked over my shoulder. It looks like you are in the minority. Take one for safety, and I'll take the other. Let them look around. What could it harm? They might fall. We'll catch them. They don't know how to swim. Then it's time to learn. I laughed at the look on her face. Relax, relax. I was a certified lifeguard when I was young, and my first aid certificate is still valid. Let's just make sure we don't need it. As we watched, they ran up and down the dock, and every time they approached the edge, she flinched. 
After expending some of their energy, they began to notice things like schools of small fish swarming around the dock. I have a habit of feeding them and the big catfish lurking below. I took a can of cheap dog food, punched several decent holes in it, and tied a strong fishing line to one of them, lowering it into the water. After a few days, it was empty, so I pulled out the jar and hung another one. I don't know how legal it is, but it's effective. Fish, yes. Let Dad bring you some time, and you can catch it, I said. One looked at me with very sad eyes for a six-year-old child. I don't have a dad. The way he said it made me think the man was dead, so I expressed my sympathy to him, to which she snorted, you sympathize with the devil. He did not die, but simply fled to unknown lands. He hasn't been seen since they were two years old. I didn't know how to respond to this, but I repeated the offer, saying that she could bring them too. From her look, I realized that this would not happen in this life, but I shrugged it off. We were just getting ready to go to the veranda when my mother appeared in the house. Hi, darling. Oh, sorry, I didn't know you had guests. I just sighed, confident that the binoculars told her about the guests. It's okay, mom. This is Annabelle's sister, sorry, I don't know her last name. She came here looking for her sister. Maybe you could turn on the message processing channel and see if there's anything there, apparently, she has been missing long enough to cause concern. I'll take care of it. Nice to meet you, Mrs. Juliet. If you find anything, I will be very grateful to you, I said. I'll try, dear, but who are these wonderful young people? She smiled for the first time, and it made her look completely different. The one on the left is Tony, and the one on the right is Mark. Mark looked at the dish his mother was holding, and she smiled. I just bought cookies for my son. Kids are never old enough to give up cookies. Wouldn't you guys like some too? Maybe some lemonade? Juliet was embarrassed and tried to refuse. Nonsense. One cookie won't kill them. If that had happened, Al would have died in his early teens. While everyone was settling down on the veranda, I bought lemonade. Mom pressed the phone to her ear, saying, uh -huh, frequently. Juliet seemed to be in a much better mood already. Mom took the phone away and grinned. Betty talked to Irma. She talked to Gloria. She talked to Jade and she told her that her cousin saw your sister two towns away at a traveler's rest with Joe Morgan. You know that this man is married, right? Also, on a cute girl. It was. We'll kill her, Juliet burst into tears, and her mother hugged her. The next moment, they were already sitting in her minivan and driving out of town, leaving the children with me. We looked at each other for several minutes. Would you like to go fishing? Yes, they really wanted to. I got out a couple of light rods and grabbed some worms from my worm farm, a plastic container that I kept filled with night crawlers and fed them with compost. I then went to my boat and took out two life jackets. I'm the only one here, and I want you to be safe. If you fall, you will immediately rise to the top like a cork, and everything will be fine. Now, be careful. They tried as hard as six-year-olds can, and they did a good job. Mark even caught a one-kilogram catfish. He wanted to keep it, but when I asked if he wanted to personally skin it and fry it, he let him go after I took a photo of them. Tony felt a little deprived until he caught crappy, which is a class of freshwater fish. Ray Finn, very good, good size, and also photographed. After an hour, they began to lose momentum, and we began to fold. I threw the remaining worms back into the container and took the kids to wash. They smelled strongly of fish and bait. To get rid of the stink, they wanted to take a bath, so I put them in the jacuzzi and turned on the jets, they squealed and laughed. As I took their clothes to the washing machine, soon it would be clean and dry. I hope so, I said. Do the boys. Their clothes were just starting to dry when they got out, so I helped them dry off as best they could, and they put on a couple of my t-shirts, they hung down to the knees. After sitting them down on the sofa and turning on a cartoon channel on the big screen, I went to check their clothes. When I returned, they were already cuddled up to each other and fast asleep. Not knowing what else to do, I started dinner. Grilled pork chops with roasted corn are one of my favorite dishes. I had some baked beans left over, so I reheated those too. I was so engrossed in what I was doing that I didn't hear the car drive up. Juliet came out onto the veranda, so furious that she was on fire, and my mother walked behind, grinning. 
Before she could explode, Mom asked, What do we have here? The movement woke up the boys, and they flew outside, climbed on top of their mother, and began to tell her about fishing, how much they liked it, and that they swam in the jacuzzi. My mother went and got their clothes, took them into the house, and dressed them. I tried to distract her, have you found Annabelle? Tears welled up in her eyes, she's using it again, and this, a married guy is her dealer. Things got pretty tense, especially when I called his wife and told her where he was. She was only a minute away from us and was causing hell until the cops arrived. When illegal pills were found in the room, Annabelle and the guy got a free trip to prison, and his wife said she would use the time it took for him to get out to get himself a lawyer. We will try to raise money for the bail, but I don't know if we will succeed. When I was with her, she didn't take anything. What's happened? I asked. She met and fell in love with the wrong man. He got her hooked on illegal substances, and she didn't regret it. Talk to the district attorney. Maybe he can persuade her to make a deal and go to rehab. If there was enough of a prohibited substance in the room, she faces criminal charges. There was a lot in the room. They were there precisely to renew their connection, Juliet explained. I saw mom and the boys coming out through the door into the patio, and she said, Here are your children. Put on a brave face and enjoy your meal. I'm sure cooking is the last thing on your mind right now. I lit candles to repel mosquitoes. The boys were full, their clean clothes were stained with barbecue sauce and oil, but their mother never complained, smiling to see them so happy. Later, we made a fire, and I let them roast marshmallows. Mom helped Mark, and Juliet helped Tony. I grinned, thinking that the passing boats thought this was just another happy family in the suburbs. I had to carry them to the car, fasten them with seat belts, and promise that they could come back any time mom allowed, if she came too. She smiled and kissed my mother and me on the cheek. When their taillights disappeared over the hill, we returned to the house and started drinking coffee. She's beautiful, yes, beautiful. These boys are simply adorable, mom remarked. Yes, she's been having a hard time since her husband disappeared, I said. Mother, what? Stop it. Okay, yes, she is sweet, and her children are wonderful, but she holds a lot of anger inside her, and until she lets it go, she will not be good for anyone. I'm not in the mood to try to re-educate anyone, I replied. It might be worth a try. Then do it yourself. I wish I hadn't said that. Mom adopted Juliet, and soon the boys began calling her grandmother. She practically ate their adoration with a spoon. Soon, they were trooping down the hill to sunbathe on my veranda, while I stayed behind to tend to the boys. I endured this twice, and the next time they came, I said, enjoy. I have work to do and won't be there until tomorrow. Lock the door when you leave, okay? I had a date with a little beauty, for a simple, no strings attached, no expectations, other than night, good time. We went to a hotel 60 miles away got a room, went to a restaurant, then to a bar where we partied until late at night, and then had intimate. We got up late, took a shower, and then went back to bed. We showered, checked out, and on the way home, I stopped at an expensive boutique to buy her a new dress. The old one was in her suitcase in very bad shape. I dropped her off, kissed her at the door, and then went home. If we saw each other again, it would be fun, but there was no spark after an intim, and we both knew it. So, I doubted a repeat. An hour later, my mother appeared at my door. Had a good time? Great, Mom, thanks for asking. Juliet was a little upset when you left. Why? Because she had to look after her own children for a change. You adopted them, not you raised them, and I'm talking more about the mother than the children. Mom was more than excited, it was inappropriate. I know how stubborn you are, but I was just hoping to give you a little push. She is a very sweet woman. How should I know? Every time I see her, she's with you and the kids, and we don't talk much, except about how to deal with boys. Mom, you're not pushing, you're pushing. Give it up, I replied. This silenced her, and she soon left. Two weeks later, Juliet drove up to my front door. I was surprised to see her alone and quickly hugged her. Where are the boys? Spending the night with your mother, along with Jen's two children. They've pitched a tent in the yard, but
but I'm willing to bet that at the first cry of an owl, they'll run into the house. I came to ask if you would take me for a ride on your boat. It would be great to spend some adult time on the water. If you're not busy, I need to check my calendar. Just look, this afternoon and evening, I am absolutely free. I'll go and get everything ready, and we'll put the refrigerator in. I won't drink while I'm running the boat, but there's a nearly full bottle of whatever red you like in the fridge. Take a few bottles of water, some food, and we're ready to go. My boat is quite large, something between a motor yacht and a speedboat, with a very powerful engine that can easily pull water skis, I explained. She had already prepared the refrigerator and changed into a very beautiful bikini and cape. Seeing my gaze, she grinned. I plan to sunbathe a little while we're here. Watch the water. I do not promise anything. I got into shorts and took some beach towels with me. I must say that we had a great time. She was as relaxed as I had ever seen her. I tried to teach her how to sail a boat, but she wasn't interested. We walked at a fairly good speed, and she watched the water rush by. I bet you could easily pull a skier with this thing. I used to like it, I said. I slowed the boat's engine down to idle and reached into the locker, taking out a pair of skis and a life belt. She refused at first and shook her head, but her body was ready for it. It took her a few tries to get on her skis, but within 30 minutes, she was having a blast. I noticed a couple of boats going by, and the guys were hooting, but I chalked it up to a cute woman in a little bikini. Until I reached out to help her into the boat. Her bikini was tiny, and she was quite busty, her top rose a little. I chuckled and said that she might need to adjust her wardrobe. She looked down, but instead of screaming, she giggled, that explains why the guys were staring, I guess I gave them a show, right? Just as she said this, a boat with children, high school students, and students floated by. One was almost hanging over the side of the boat, show your breasts, he shouted, to wild laughter. Instead of getting angry, she went to the side of the boat and jerked off her top, twirling it over her head. They almost crashed into another boat. She disappeared from sight under the awning, and I pressed the throttle, giving it full throttle until they were out of sight. So, you're an exhibitionist now, are you? I asked. Not at all. Don't be shy to show off whatever you're comfortable with next to me. I will never mind, she replied. She was about to put on her top when she grinned and kicked it off. I'll sunbathe a little. Don't let me burn. How can I do this? Juliet rolled her eyes. First, make sure I have enough sunblock on. I turned off the engines and dropped anchor in a small bay. I can do this for you. There is a small platform at the front of the boat specifically designed for situations like this. It is located below the line of the sides and is not visible from passing boats. In the mood to tease her, I started applying the cream from her toes and up. Afterwards, we made love. We stayed at the lake for a couple more hours and then had a second round on my bed. She dozed off, and I called my mom to make sure she had the boys. She giggled and said yes, and I told her that Juliet was napping. Then I asked her to give us a couple of hours before bringing the boys over for dinner. I prepared everything, including the side dish, and left the steaks to marinate and rest until it was time to wake her. I kissed her, and she barely coming to her senses jumped out of bed, boys, I'm late. I stopped her by kissing her, everything is alright with them. Mom will bring them in about 30 minutes, so I advise you to take a shower and clean yourself up, and I'll light the coals. By the time Mom and the boys arrived, Juliet was wearing shorts and one of my t-shirts, and her hair was pulled back into a wet ponytail. Mom smiled at her, and she flushed red, then they hugged tightly. I took the boys outside with me so they could talk. They both came out grinning and sat at the table, drinking tea, while I set out the dishes. Then my mother took out banana pudding, which she secretly hid in the refrigerator while we were at the lake. Mom and I received nice hugs from Juliet and the boys, as well as a few kisses from her when the boys weren't looking. We watched the tail lights disappear around the bend. Mom grinned expectantly. I need to check my calendar, I said. Just look. This afternoon and evening, I am absolutely free. I'll go and get everything ready, and we'll put the refrigerator in. I won't drink while I'm running the boat, but there's a nearly full bottle of whatever red you like in the fridge. 
take a few bottles of water, some food, and we're ready to go. My boat is quite large, something between a motor yacht and a speedboat, with a very powerful engine that can easily pull water skis, I explained. She had already prepared the refrigerator and changed into a very beautiful bikini and cape. Seeing my gaze, she grinned, I plan to sunbathe a little while we're here. Watch the water. I do not promise anything. I got into shorts and took some beach towels with me, firmly convinced that if I didn't see, I wouldn't believe. I looked into four clubs in our city, she was not in any of them, but at the third, when I had already decided to go home, I saw her car. She must have gotten there late. I gave them a few minutes and went out, stopping by her car. It's hard to tell if they're doing anything serious, but the windows were foggy. Without thinking, I knocked on the window until he lowered it. I saw her bra lying on his lap. What do you want? Oh, nothing. Just wanted to say hello to Juliet. I'm already leaving. Have fun, I replied. Her eyes widened when she heard my words, but by that time, I was already leaving. I heard a car door open and a scream, but by that time, I was already in my truck, spreading gravel, leaving the parking lot. Two weeks passed before she plucked up the courage to come without the boys. Can I talk to you? Of course, come in. It's quite cool now because of the time of year. I offered her a cup of coffee, and when it was poured, we sat down at the kitchen table. She took a few sips before speaking. Do you want me to tell you about it? Not really, but if you feel the need to ease your soul, then go ahead. I think the answer surprised her. I never promised that we would have an exclusive relationship. You're right. On the other hand, you never told me that you were seeing someone else. It's just Gary. Well, this way I'll sleep more peacefully. On the Friday after that, I got tested and just got the results. I am clean. He's clean. Why are you being so nasty? You don't yet know what disgusting is. Do you have feelings for him? No, I don't know. It's good that I know. I won't be your backup plan, Julie. You can't sleep with him during the week and then bring your leftovers to me on the weekends. You knew that I wanted to deepen our relationship. Yeah, that would be a mistake, I think, Juliet. That you should stay away from me for a while until you calm down. This won't change anything. I'll never be able to trust you again. So let's just agree that it was fun and move on with our lives. Bring the boys, don't hide them from my mother, or me, for that matter. They are not to blame for anything. For almost an hour, she tried to get me to accept the situation. Then she sighed, hugged me, and left. Mom was devastated, she became very attached to the boys. A couple of weeks later, she called Julie, said she wanted to see the boys, and insisted that she bring them to visit. She herself did not stay, she dropped them off and said that she would return in three hours. My mom said they were really upset that I was no longer dating their mom and asked if she thought I was mad at them. She immediately called me, and 30 minutes later, two happy boys were scrambling towards me. I said that they were always welcome, regardless of whether I was with my mother or not, and promised that we would go fishing as soon as it warmed up again. Winter has passed, snow fell once during the entire season. Back home, the snow fell right after Thanksgiving, and the ground stayed white until late March, a little harsh even for those parts. I persuaded John and Adele to come to me in February. They stayed with me for about a week, and we even had time to go fishing a little. Adele spent time with her mother, and I took John out to play golf, and the week flew by quickly. They were talking about how they didn't want to go back, and I suggested, so move here. I can find John a job where I work perhaps for about more than he earns now, and the cost of living here is quite low. Both of your parents are retired and live further south, so you might see them more often. I have a lot of space, so you can stay with me until you find something you like. Think about it. I didn't tell them that I had been promoted and was now assistant factory manager with a nice raise and some nice bonuses. They promised to think about it, but I knew that John would not agree. He enjoys his job and has a large network of friends there. Adele would have moved right away. They got married right after she graduated from high school eight years ago. I wondered why they still didn't have children. She was 26, and John was several years older, and the clock must be ticking. About a week after they left, I asked my mother about it. 
There was sadness on her face. They can't have children, dear, due to some illness. John cannot become a father. Adele wants to adopt a child, but he doesn't really want it. Why? If I were him, I would be all for it, especially if my wife wanted it, I replied. She shrugged, men are different, dear. He may think that every time he looks at his adopted child, it will remind him that he could not give such a child to her. Who knows? I think she's right. I go on dates fairly regularly, it probably helps that I'm one of the most eligible bachelors around. And although at least three people want to deepen the relationship, there is not enough spark to make me think about it. Mom was desperate. Then something happened that changed my life. I got a call in the middle of the night, and I didn't understand a word of what the female voice was trying to tell me. Finally, she calmed down and said that I should come to her, John is sick. I reassured Adele on the phone as best I could and then called my mother. She flew with me, mom always loved John and Adele, calling him her second son and Adele the daughter she never had. At the airport, we rented a car, and an hour later, we were driving up to their house. Adele met us at the door, limp in my mother's arms and sobbing. I found John on the sofa, looking at him, I realized that he did not have long to live in this world. Always quite stocky but heavily muscled, he looked as if he weighed 68 kilograms or less, his skin was gray, and his breathing was labored, but he still grinned when he saw me. I know I look like crap, he said. He had cancer, and it was spreading quickly. He resisted going to the doctor until it was too late, and nothing could be done about him other than sending him home and giving him a prescription for painkillers. Five months ago, he was given three months. I sat by his bed, and we talked all night, remembering what we had done, places we had been, friends we no longer saw, moving from one topic to another, sometimes laughing, sometimes silently crying. Closer to morning, he grabbed my hand, take care of her, dude. Promise. I solemnly promised him, and he relaxed. Later the next day, he handed me a folder, whatever she needs, insurance information, bank accounts. A week after, I found out, I paid for the funeral. She won't be able to think coherently, so you have to guide her, he said. I tried to brush it off, we still have a lot of time for this. You need to hold on. By that time, he was already lying on a hospital bed in the ward and grinning, you have always been an optimist. That night, he died in his sleep with his wife holding his hands. He was 33, and she was 27. The rest was a blur. I notified the funeral home, and they sent someone to pick up the body. The police were called, and the coroner examined his body at the morgue, after which he certified the death certificate. We followed his instructions to the letter, and I was surprised at how many people had gathered, but everyone who knew him loved him. During the funeral, I sat on one side of her, and her father sat on the other. My mother was next to me, and Adele's mother was next to her. I spent my entire vacation helping her with the paperwork that always follows death. I gave a copy of the death certificate to their insurance agent, and a week later, she received a check. The agent was my friend, and everything was simple and clear. In the end, I had to go back to work, and my mother promised to stay with her for a while. She stayed there for three weeks, and when she returned home, Adele was with her. Mom said that she wanted to rid herself of the memories that pop up with every step. Adele was like a zombie for another month before she came to me, I need a job. Your mom is great, but I need to go out and at least try to be productive again. After paying off the insurance and selling the house, I have about $400,000, so it's time for me to go house hunting. I was overjoyed that she was going to stay here. I told her how happy I was, and she gave me a rare smile, I would have moved here when you suggested. JN was stubborn. I don't think I could survive another winter there, especially if I was alone. My company hired her based on my recommendation. We didn't work together, but we had lunch together three or four times a week. She turned out to be very good at the job, she got increasing our department's efficiency by 4%, and although that didn't seem like much, the owners were very pleased. She made friends and found a small apartment, that's all I need at the moment. I think I'd like to live on a lake, so once I'm settled, Maybe we could look at a few properties. I'd like to know your opinion. I once saw her in one of the clubs at a bachelorette party. She laughed and was almost constantly on the dance floor, but I noted that she did not slow dance with anyone or take drinks. 
She and JN had been inseparable since she was 15, so I guess the club scene and her dating skills were a little rusty. We started talking about it the following Monday during lunch. I saw you on Saturday. You can still move, girl. Adele blushed but then grinned. Why weren't you there? I would love to dance with you. I was in the billiard room participating in a darts tournament. I was doing pretty well until this Brit showed up. I don't know if they invented this game, but they definitely know how to throw. Besides, I didn't want the old memories to overshadow the new ones. Her face became gloomy. I had a good time, but when I returned home, I felt guilty. It's not worth it. It's been almost a year since we lost him, and you've had many good years. I would kill for a woman to love me the same way you loved him, but he is gone, and you are still here, still young, and deserving of happiness. He must have laughed his head off watching. Why didn't you find someone else? You're not creepy, you have a good job and a house on the lake. I came close to it a couple of times, but it didn't work out. I believe that she is here somewhere, but now she is hiding very well. I wouldn't worry too much, as soon as you stop looking, you will find her. Perhaps she has been under your nose all this time. If that's the case, then the military should immediately hire her as a camouflage expert. We talked about other things and then got back to work. Winter came again, and Adele decided that she had found her betrothed. According to his mother, he is very pleasant, always ready to joke, and quite handsome. Something about his face made me grind my teeth, but she seemed happy, and I chalked it up to misplaced devotion to my old friend. They started dating in the fall, and by February, he was already living in her apartment, and she admitted to her mother that she was expecting a ring soon. I wasn't thrilled with the news, but if she's happy, I'll be happy for her. Then cracks began to appear, he lost his job and was in no hurry to look for a new one. After all, Adele has enough money for both of them. At first, it was money for gas while he looked for work, then she signed him up for her phone plan and paid that bill. If they wanted to go somewhere, it was always at her expense. One day she was in a bad mood at work, and I asked her why. She talked about herself and then blurted out, he says that you and I can't have lunch together anymore. He said that it was not nice for a woman in a serious relationship to spend so much time with another man. I took a deep breath and tried not to blur out what I was thinking, but I was quite abrupt. We've been friends for 15 years, long before he showed up. If you want to give up this friendship, I have no choice but to agree, but I have to say that it will suck. I didn't interfere in your relationship, but I have to tell you this. This guy is a loser, Adele. Tell him that if he doesn't want you to go out to dinner with your friends, then he should do something like get a job and pay his own bills, and then spend all the extra money on you. Maybe I should take you out to lunch several times a week at my own expense. I'm sorry, honey, but the cards are open, and to tell you the truth, I can't stand him. You'll be a fool if you marry him, and if you do, don't expect me at the wedding. Good luck, you'll need it. I got up and left in the middle of the meal, and the last thing I saw was her sitting at the table, bright red, with her mouth open. The next few times she asked me for lunch, I made the excuse that I was too busy for it. Every time she saw me at work, she looked like she was about to cry. Then this happened. We were going through one of our rare snowstorms, and I was sitting in front of the fireplace, alternately looking at the flames and the snow falling outside when a car pulled up in my driveway. I wondered who might be out during this storm. There was about 8 centimeters of snow on the ground, and southerners are not known for their ability to drive in snow. I tried to stay off the roads, not because I couldn't drive in such conditions, but because 90% of my neighbors couldn't. After the snowfall, I laughed until I dropped, seeing all these cars in the ditch. Sometimes he would take a tow rope, put the car in four-wheel drive, and drive around pulling people out. He didn't take money, but he never refused cookies or cake from grateful wives. When I opened the door, I saw Adele getting out of the car, but instead of rushing inside, she walked slowly. I pulled her into the house and was shocked when she raised her head, her left eye was swollen and already purple. She walked slowly because she had a huge bruise on her ribs, which made it difficult to breathe. I sat her down by the fire, took off her wet sweatpants and sweater, wrapped her in blankets, and gave her a towel for her hair. Then I hugged her until she calmed down. What's happened? I finally had enough and told Trey to leave. I gave him an ultimatum, get a job and start contributing, or it's all over between us. 
He said that I want children, but not those who are already 34 years old. It all started when he found a truck that he absolutely wanted and wanted me to make a down payment of $5,000 and take ownership of it. He got very angry when I said that no, if he needs it, then he should earn the money to buy it himself. From that moment on, everything went wrong. He left and came back three hours later, driving a truck, saying I had to take my fifth place to the dealership in the morning to give them the check and fill out the paperwork. When I told him not even no, but hell no, he became furious. I bet if your Yankee asked, you would do it for him. Of course, but it doesn't matter. First of all, Al has too much pride to pull a stunt like that, and he always had a job since he was 15. He would have died of embarrassment rather than ask a girl for something like that. She burst into tears for a second but then calmed down, then he hit me in the ribs. I fell but got up. He managed to put a flashlight in my eye before I hit him with all my might. When I left, he was lying on the floor in sounds. I immediately called one of my fishing buddies, who happened to be a police officer, and told him what had happened. She needs to file a complaint right now. Our four WDs are in use, and they have a lot of work to do due to the snowstorm, but first thing tomorrow, she should come over if she can and do all the paperwork. I'll tell my family that you called because of the snowstorm and have them keep an eye on him. She'll stay with you, won't she? She won't go anywhere, fine. I doubt he'll try to follow her in this weather, but stay alert. It would be a good idea to take a couple of pictures and send them to us while the tracks are fresh. Of course, he is not that stupid. Thanks, Hank. We'll be there as soon as the roads are clear. I'll send pictures in a few minutes. It turned out that he was just that stupid, and the alcohol he drank further lowered his IQ. Like I said, I live right on a lake, and my backyard overlooks it. He drove into the lake while driving a new truck, hitting my truck because he couldn't stop. He spun and rolled towards the water, and when he stopped, the back end was already in the lake, and no matter how hard he pressed the gas, it did not move. I don't believe in guns, which amuses my new friends immensely, and now I think I ought to listen to them. He walked up the hill, staggered, slipped, and fell three times before he reached the door. Adele called the police, and they told us not to open the door, so we ignored his screams and knocking. Then he was smart enough to come into my open garage and started banging on the door, screaming about what he was going to do to both of us. We would have let him rant, but he was smart, and a policeman arrived in time. He inspected the damage to my truck, the other truck in the water, and walked in with his gun drawn. He glanced at the guy with a look of disgust. Dude, are you crying? Well, you're a wuss. I would say you need to grow some dignity, but this woman seems to have taken it away from you. Sir, you're under arrest for criminal trespass, destruction of personal property, attempted breaking and entering, assault on a female, general assault, and anything else I can think of on the way from here to jail. Your life just turned to. Now, don't say a word from here to prison to protect your rights. Do you understand? He left it lying in the cold garage while he took readings and then I had to help lift it into the back of the SUV. I pulled Adele into the shower to warm her up and left her with one of my t-shirts and a thick robe. That night, she slept with me for safety, but it still felt very nice when she snuggled up to me. The next morning, I woke up before her and saw my mother in her kitchen, smiling like crazy. The smile disappeared when I told her what happened. Put the coffee on and start breakfast. I have some important motherly things to do. They didn't come out until breakfast was ready, and I was surprised at how much Adele ate. By noon, most of the road was cleared, and Mom took her home in my truck to pack some things she wanted to keep. She offered to keep her for a while until she felt safe. They returned home with gloomy faces. Mom told me the news. He trashed the apartment, broke the furniture, and threw it out into the snow. About most of her clothes, we salvaged what we could, and both our washers and dryers will work for a while. She reported this to the apartment managers and told them who did it. They want to recover from the damage AG to the walls and kitchen sink, but it looks like Adele's deposit won't be returned at the end of the lease. The attack happened on a Friday, so he didn't appear before a judge until Monday. And when he did, he almost fainted when the charges were read to him. The car dealership where he took the car was pursuing him because in the two days it took for the tow truck, it completely went underwater, destroying the engine and the value of the car. Even if it were repaired, 
it would have to be sold for salvage, and most banks will not give a loan for salvage. The truck was three years old and was valued at $34,000. The trespassing charge was upgraded to a felony, which was much more serious. The damage done to my truck was six grand, and since the truck he was driving had dealer plates on it, the dealership had to pay for the repairs, which they immediately attached to their claim. The damage to the apartment amounted to $4,000 for repairs, and her furniture and personal belongings were estimated at $3,000. Then came the assault charges. In this state, assaulting a woman is a really serious matter. Add to that two charges of attempted assault and attempted breaking and entering, and he found himself stranded on the headwaters of the creek, which is to say completely screwed without even a boat, let alone oars. His bail was set at $200,000, and there was no way he could post it, not even the 10% that a bondsman would require. The judge asked him why he was covered in purple stripes, and when he found out the reason, he could hardly contain his laughter. He couldn't afford a lawyer, and a public defender told him his best option was to plead guilty. The district attorney consolidated all the felonies and dropped some lesser charges, but he will have to serve for years before he is eligible for parole. When everyone involved filed civil suits against him, numerous judgments were entered against him. When he is released, he will have approximately $120,000 in debt. No one involved believed they would see a penny unless they won the lottery or inherited a ton of money, but that would prevent them from getting anything that required payment for at least seven years. Adele had to undergo therapy because of her fear. Almost a year passed before she was able to return to normal life. She bought a gun, took safety and concealed carry courses, and carries a gun almost everywhere. I even bought myself special pocket holsters that allow me to shoot without taking out my weapon. Mom kept her for six months, and she spent a lot of time with me, sleeping in the guest room. This usually lasted until about midnight, after which she would slip into bed and snuggle with me. This always made me happy and sad at the same time. One evening while a woman I was dating was visiting me, Adele arrived unannounced. By then, she had her key, so she simply unlocked the door and entered. Buntai, a nickname she earned for being as small as a bantam chick, and I were at the very beginning of what I hoped would be a very pleasant night. Adele shouted something to me as she came in, looked at us, turned around, and ran out. I had to close the door behind her. Buntai looked at me with an unkind look, wanting to know why she had a key to my house. When I told her the story of my long relationship with Adele dating back to elementary school and how her husband was my best friend, she calmed down. At the end, I talked about the incident that led to her having a key so that she would always have a safe place. She giggled, my hero, who would have thought that a fishing rod could become such a formidable weapon? If her ex didn't know, he knows now. The cops said some of the damage we did would last forever, for the rest of his life, in and out of prison. Every time he thinks about doing something stupid, I hope he gets hurt. Call her and tell her to get her fifth place back here. I want to meet your sister. It took an hour to persuade her to return to the house. Buntai met her at the door, hugging her tightly and kissing her cheek, and whispered in her ear, he can be a little grumpy. Your return ruined all his plans. Well, I heard that delayed gratification makes it sweeter, a lesson he would have to learn. Addie blushed and giggled, and as they walked into the house holding hands, I knew I was in for a long night. They were still giggling and sharing secrets, starting on their third bottle of wine when I gave up and went to bed. In the morning, I got up early, so I set the coffee to brew, and then woke Bunte up with a strong kiss. Get up, lazy one. Breakfast will be ready in 30 minutes. She make a sound and tried to wrap her head up, and I pulled the blanket off the bed, admiring her tight little body in tiny panties and a nightgown. She growled, but I scooped her up into my arms and kissed her again, then pointed to three ibuprofen tablets and a glass of water on the nightstand. She swallowed the pills and washed them down with water. Give me an hour before breakfast. I'll go pick up your second girlfriend. I hope she feels as bad as I do. I fiddled around, drank some coffee, then put on another coffee pot. There was the sound of a shower and a few groans, and they entered the kitchen. Buntai was wearing a new nightie with panties, and Addie, as far as I could tell, was only wearing one of my t-shirts. They giggled at my face and teased me without mercy while they ate breakfast. This afternoon, we will go boating. Be ready. 
They then put on shorts and t-shirts, jumped into Addie's car, and drove away. A little later, I saw the car in my mother's driveway and wondered if they would leave poor Haim alone. He moved in with her a few months ago, and only last week I noticed my mother's new ring with a stone. Hiram was quite successful and inclined to spoil his mother if she allowed him to. A couple of hours later, they came laughing. Mom is getting married, Adele chuckled, and what gave her away? The fact that her left hand is practically dragging along the ground from the weight of the stone on her finger and the fact that she's been in a very good mood lately. I can't get anything out of you girls, can I? They rolled their eyes and started discussing wedding plans. Mom and Hiram came down to us and announced that they were coming with us, so we set off with high hopes and a refrigerator full of wine and beer. Hiram drank more than I've ever seen, and we started talking. Are you nervous? Undoubtedly. Your mother is a real woman, and I hope I can make her happy in the future. It's too late for that. You've already managed to make her as happy as I haven't seen since my father passed away. I can just hear her sigh and look at me with big eyes. You know, it's a pity that your poor mother is getting married before you. Looks like I'll have to depend on Lisa and Jerry for grandchildren. These are Hiram's children from his first marriage. He grinned, on the other hand, she has already taken two children from Lisa. Babui spent most of yesterday baking with them and teaching them to call her grandma, smiling every time they said it. Nevertheless, before us are two beautiful women, any of them will make an excellent daughter-in-law. Think about it. Damn, are you going there too? I'm finished. Buntelia and Adele became best friends. In fact, I was a little jealous of the time they spent together. They became a great couple. Adele is a large girl with long blonde hair, and Buntai is petite, 1 meter 52, and weighs 44 kilograms. She keeps her black hair short, accentuated by the diamond stilettos I gave her for her birthday. We met at one of the corporate events. She is a salesperson, but they were invited, and she was chosen to display the flag. At first, I thought she was a child until she turned around, and I got a good look at her body dressed in a simple top and shorts, and the first thing that came to my mind was, now I know what a goddess looks like when left in the drawer for a long time. The image made me grin, and she smiled back. My assistant, who was a good friend of my mother, introduced us to each other. Mom dragged her into her desire to marry me, and from time to time, I had to draw boundaries which she immediately crossed, grinning, you won't fire me. You yourself said the other day that I'm the best. I'm coping with your work bids. If you do this, your mother will make your life miserable until you bring me back. She thinks I need a raise. Maybe you'd like to discuss that with her. And now, as I said, young Sarah, a new employee in the accounting department, she is just a sweetheart, and you are lonely too. I bet she'd be happy to have someone show her around. Then organize it, just not with me. She doesn't work for me, she works for her boss, and if we get close and then grow apart, something bad could happen. I won't fish in the company pond, she sighed. Bev said you were stubborn. Forget about Era, there are many women in this city who would like you, me, yes, you, or someone like you, a young professional with a good career, a good home, and salary, and your eyes are not bad. In general, you are a good candidate for a husband. You lose a few points for being a Yankee, but I'm sure they're willing to make the effort to train you. But despite this, I still wanted to meet this nicely girl with a meter-sized cap. She seemed pleased to meet me and then turned to Gladys. I am 23rd or 24th, Gladys blushed, and this seemed original to me. 26th, but I don't care, Alicia, Buntaya's real name, smiled at my confusion. That's how many times you were introduced to suitable young girls. Your company makes different bets, what will be your lucky number? How soon will you get married? The time and gender of your first child. God, you guys are having fun here. She shrugged, the town is small, not much happens here. Let's get down to business. I'm 27, I've never been married. I have three brothers and one sister. I have a good job, and, of course, I'm very hot in bed, helpful information, I'm sure you know everything about me down to my underwear size, but I'll tell you about the main thing. I'm 34, I was married once, and it didn't end very well. I own a house on a lake. I like to fish and spend time on the water. 
and if we start dating, the level of yours I define intimately from. The source you prefer knitted boxers with an 86 waist. Lake fishing is boring for you, better stream fishing and spinning. You'd rather hunt fish than just sit in a boat sipping beer and hoping for something to kill on your hook. Well then, we will remain unconvinced. There is something soothing about sitting in the middle of the night and listening to the sounds of nature under the full moon. If you are a stalker, a persistent pursuer, then I am more of a predator sitting in ambush, knowing the character and habits of his victim, and silently waiting for the opportunity to strike without warning. Then I'll keep a close eye on you, I wouldn't want to fall into a trap. Let's take some water, find a shady place, and discuss everything in more detail. I chuckled, a typical southerner, she prefers to do business in the shade when it's hot and in the sun when it's cold. Practicality has been developed over centuries. I turned to talk to Gladys but found that she was not there. Where did Gladys go? I can still see her grin. She probably decided to tell the person who chose 26 that he will soon become much richer. This is how our relationship began. We talked for another hour until it was time for her to leave. I stood up to say goodbye, and she threw herself into my arms, showering me with kisses. Then she pulled away and grinned, just for the sake of testing, do your lips tingle? I tried to be careful, I didn't want you to get burned at the first contact. I was still trying to find the right words when she ran away. I turned around to see Gladys and six office ladies grinning after me. Not a word, Gladys, I said as I walked away. I heard laughter and looked at her, noticing that she was taking out her phone. Mom will have a full report before I even get in my truck. Bunte showed up the following Wednesday. I raised my head and saw her standing in the doorway. Her smile made me feel good. Come on, you. Take me to lunch somewhere nice. I know you can afford it. Oh, and when we pass Gladys, expect a big kiss. I've already started marking my territory. It was a really big smack, and when she released me, I grinned at Gladys. I'll be back later, Gladys. Send SMS if anything happens, she muttered, fumbling for her phone. Yes, boss. Gladys, if my mom needs to contact me, I'm at Honey Hog. Alicia was still laughing when we walked out the door. Lunch turned into dinner. I took her to the nearest big city because the choice of entertainment in a small city was to put it mildly, small. I think she enjoyed the theatrics of being in front of a dinner crowd, and we walked around a bit before heading home. She felt very good being on my arm despite the difference in height. Over the next few weeks, we talked and texted a lot. I felt like we had reached a milestone when she invited me to Sunday dinner to introduce her to her parents. I think they liked me. Her father turned the kitchen equipment around, and five Boston loaves were cooked on the grill along with three chickens and a brisket. You shouldn't start a fire just for a couple of cigarette butts, he told me as I stirred the coals, and he tended to the meat. I watched and learned because I wanted to be able to replicate what he did. We talked about different types of meat rubs and favorite sauces. He was surprised that I preferred the vinegar pepper flake version to the sweet Piedmont sauces. We stayed with him for about 45 minutes before a very angry woman appeared in front of us. That's enough, daddy. Let him go. Mom hasn't gotten to him yet, he kissed her cheek and grinned. And he's not bad, dear, for a Yankee. I wondered if this was a sign of approval. Alicia's mother is almost as petite as herself, but she has blonde hair. She is sweet and unassuming, but when the conversation ended, I realized that this was precisely the interrogation methods of the Gestapo. She smiled sweetly and kissed me on the cheek, telling me to go help her husband while they prepared the side dishes. I grabbed a couple of bear claws, Danish almond scones filled with fruit jam, and started pinching them off while he sliced the brisket. He hadn't touched the chickens yet, and when her brother showed up, it reminded me of documentaries about hyenas butchering a carcass. Having had their fill, everyone sat down in the rocking chairs and chairs on the porch. Bunte led me to the swing where she could snuggle with me. We talked about everything under the sun, and the conversation turned to fishing. Suddenly, it turned out that her brothers, their wives, and, in the case of one of them, the girl, were going to go on our boat this coming Saturday. Dad and Mom were planning to sail with us next Saturday. Later, walking her home, I couldn't resist teasing her. Our boat, yes, you stupid man, our boat. 
I need you to get used to the fact that I have grabbed you with all my claws, and I'm not going to let go. Do I have the right to vote? Yes, you need to learn to say yes, honey, quite often. But if you can't feel what I feel, take me home, otherwise, we will sleep in your old, my new house today. This is a hint of what I am suggesting. I don't know when she lost her bra, but she unbuttoned her blouse and showed breasts like I've never seen before. Her clothes never made it inside the house. The next morning, I had to go out and collect it and warm it up in the dryer. The next morning, we made love again, and when we finished, she sighed and hugged me. I love you, baby. Then it dawned on her what she had said, and she screamed, running into the bathroom. I flew right behind her, and she tried to hide in the shower. Say it again, I demanded. I, I didn't mean, I, I spanked her fifth place, and she squealed, but not with pleasure. If you don't want to have a red fifth place, repeat it again, I said firmly. I love you, she whimpered. Sorry. I should beat your fifth place black and blue for apologizing. If she weren't so beautiful and I didn't like her so much, I would have done just that. Now listen to me. You will repeat this to me at least every half hour until I take you home. Understand? When I decide that you are serious when you say this, I will tell you the same thing in return. By then, she was crying hard, so I turned on the shower and gently washed her while she sniffled. By the time we had finished, Buntai had come to her senses and was smiling again. She wore one of my shirts, and it came down to her knees. I noted that only one button was fastened. Her phone rang, and she grinned. I love you. That's better. Well, shall we have breakfast? She giggled and ran around the kitchen, getting to know her while I finished cooking. Looking at her plate, she grinned, corn porridge. I like its taste. Shut up and eat. While we were washing the dishes, the doorbell rang. I will open, she took off, and I immediately followed her. At least she buttoned her shirt. Mom stood there and looked at us questioningly, and then grinned, introduced me, honey. I was deprived of this opportunity. Bunte grabbed her hand, hello, mom. I'm Alicia, but most people call me Buntai because of my size. I am your future daughter-in-law when your son is wise enough to propose to me. Mom's smile spread across her face, and she hugged her. He's a little slow sometimes, honey, but he usually gets where he needs to go. She stopped to kiss me on the cheek. Make us some fresh coffee, honey. Alicia and I may be late. I'm sure you have some urgent business outside that needs to be done in an hour or so, right? Crap, I had been driven out of my own home, but every good general knows that when he is outnumbered and outgunned, the best option is to leave the battlefield. So I put down the coffee pot and went to wash the boat. When I got up from the dock, my mother was already walking out the door. She smiled and kissed me on the cheek, then she warned, don't screw it up. Bunte began to smile, but before she could speak, the phone rang again. I love you, I hugged her and kissed her on the cheek. I love you too, baby. Have you and your mom already set a date? When she stopped crying, I grinned again. No, we have to come to an agreement with my mom. I'll call her right now. We'll be at the house with our moms until tonight, so order takeout, and we'll all be there by 6 o'clock. Then she walked out the door and left. I went on a boat, sailed without any purpose, thinking about life. Then I decided that fate was giving me a golden chance for happiness and I must be sure that I would use it successfully. The Chinese food arrived immediately after I returned, and five minutes later, they were walking through the door, binoculars. They had reinforcements with them, Adele and Buntaya's older sister. She was the first child, and Alicia was the last, so there are eight years between them. She is also about one and one-half meters tall. I smiled at Alicia, maybe they should have given you the nickname Rundy Runt. I hope the handprint on my cheek disappears before I have to go to work. By the time I arrived at work, everything was already known. I received a letter from one of the managers who thanked me for my determination. It looks like he was the one who bet on 26. Gladys kissed me deeply, don't forget to tell everyone that I introduced you. When is the wedding? I don't know, didn't the girls call you last night to ask your opinion? I just disappeared when they tell me. She blossomed slightly, we are thinking about the last weekend in June. It will be quite hot by then, 
but we can handle it. Here's your solution. Well, it looks like I'm no longer in control of my life. It annoyed me, and it didn't help how they were pushing their agenda. Two weeks passed, and again my mother, sister, Adele, Gladys, and some others I did not know about the wedding plans began to tell me about the wedding plans. They asked my opinion twice, and then laughed and contradicted me, and I suddenly got tired of it. I went to the door, where are you going? We're not done yet. First of all, I don't know where I'm just going away from here, and we're much closer to completing than you think, Alicia, where's your ring? Have I ever asked, Alicia, will you marry me? Let's not guess. No, you don't have a ring, and no, I never asked that question, you just assumed it, and walked away, and then you all drove over me like a tram over a coin on the rails, and you expected me to just nod and say yes ma'am. It will not happen, not now, not ever. You need to think about this for a few days and come back to me. Think carefully. Their eyes grew wider, and both mothers and Alicia looked like they were about to faint. I walked out the door and drove away, leaving ruts in the grass because they blocked my path. I bet when they tried to call me, they felt really stupid when the phone turned up on the coffee table before returning. I was away for four days, taking time off from work and taking two days off. It took me three trips to the ATM to pay for a new wardrobe and a couple of motel rooms. I drove north, deciding that they would never look that way. I was surprised when on the third day I was stopped by a female state trooper checking my registration and license. Sir, do you know that you are wanted as a missing person? No, I don't know at all. What do you mean I'm missing? I am an adult. I have no attachment. Why should anyone care where I am? My company knows because I took time off but they are the only ones I have to report to, she stepped back, sensing the irritation in my voice, then handed me the documents back. Excellent, sir, I'll cancel the missing person's report. I don't know what's going on in your life, and frankly, it's none of the state's business, but someone was concerned enough to fill out an application. It might be nice to call home, but that's your choice. Drive carefully, and all the best. When I pulled away, she was already talking on the radio, and I turned around at the next overpass and drove back the same way I came here. When I walked through the office doors on Wednesday, the look on Gladys's face was priceless. To my office immediately, and leave your cell phone in the drawer if you want to continue working here, Gladys. I watched as she took it and put it on the table. She looked like she was about to be executed when I made her sit down. Some new rules, Gladys. I like you, you're great at your job, and you'll be hard to replace but if you start prying into my personal affairs, if you tell mom and Alicia about my every move, this will happen. Understood? She looked completely unhappy but nodded her head. Not enough. I need you to say it out loud. I promise, whatever happens in the office stays in the office, and I will never interfere in your personal life again. Thank you, Gladys. Now remind me what I missed while we talked about business. She relaxed and moved on to fixing minor fires that happened while I was away. An hour later, she called me, Reggie wants to meet you when you have time. Reggie is the factory manager, and when you have time means immediately. He asked how my holiday was, offered me coffee, and then seemed unusually nervous. Look, Al, I don't want to get involved in which of them bothered you, Mother, Alicia, Gladys, none of them. Hiram texted me about how upset he was. He stopped, surprised that I stood up. You know, Reggie, I like you, and I like it here. For me, this is a dream job, but I made a vow to myself that if my personal and professional lives ever became intertwined, I would walk away from both. Will two weeks be enough? If not, I can give you a month, but no more. I'll send you an HR statement as soon as I get back to my desk. Goodbye, Reggie, his eyes widened, and he mumbled something uncertain as I walked out. He called me as soon as I returned to my office, and I put it on speaker, rummaging through my files, taking away everything personal. He went from pleading to demanding, and I laughed. What are you threatening me with, Reggie, my job? This ship sailed 30 minutes ago. Press me, and I will go to the corporation and ask them since when did the vice president become interested in the personal life of an employee? How do you think this will pan out? Gladys burst into tears when I left the office at the end of the working day. Then she started apologizing, you can stop, Gladys. I know you meant me no harm, and I don't hold it against you because I think you truly believed you had my best interests at heart. 
but learn from this. It doesn't matter who it will be in the future, but think carefully before interfering in his life till tomorrow. I knew my mother would be watching me, but two hours passed before she got up the courage to come. She looked more indecisive than I had ever seen her, her strong-willed character for a time muted. Hi, Mom, I said, opening the door and kissing her on the cheek. Do you want some coffee? Tears started falling even before the coffee was brewed. Have we ruined everything? Not really, but you did a great job getting started. Did you really think that you could force me? I keep forgetting that you are just like your father, satisfied, flexible until something goes against your beliefs. It never occurred to any of us that you could react this way. Poor Alicia, broken. She didn't work all week because all she could do was cry. Do you still love her? Yes, but she seems to love her ego a little more than me. Do not say that. This girl loves you with all her heart and soul. If you told her now that you wanted her to put on a gunny sack and smear her face with mud in front of the altar, she would do so as long as it meant marriage. Interesting image. Give me a minute to think. No, I don't like it. Is there anything else? Just this. The slap made my ears ring and my vision blur. If she leaves you, you deserve it for a change. Act with your heart, not your logic. Yes, we all got carried away but I think you gave us a jolt that none of us will ever forget, bringing us back to reality. I love you, son, but at this moment, I don't really like you. I was still trying to gather my thoughts when she slammed the door behind her. Thinking I agreed with her at that moment, I didn't really like her either. Twenty minutes later, I called Buntai and heard her gasp when she realized it was me. To my home now if you want to save our relationship. Fifteen minutes passed, and I saw her talking on the phone as she got out of the car. Undoubtedly, she learned the news from her mother. Her hair was disheveled, her eyes were dull, and her clothes seemed to be hanging off of her. I opened the door, and it suddenly occurred to me that I was tired of seeing fear in a woman's eyes when she was talking to me. I pointed her to the sofa, and tears appeared in her eyes as I sat down in the chair. So, what did we learn from this mess, Alicia? This really hurt her. I never called her by name unless it was something serious. I don't know about you, but I've learned a lot over the past few days. I realize that you have a line that I better not cross, and I need to know where it is so that this does not happen again. I also realize that my attitude, which helps me so much in business, does not work in my personal situation. I really didn't want to push you away, darling, but the more you let me, the more I took you for granted. This will not happen again. She ran out of steam, and I started, do you know what I learned? I realized that I take love too easily. I just wanted you to be happy, but not when it makes me sad or angry, especially angry. I'm sorry if this took you by surprise, but did you really think I'd keep doing this? Do you know what I think? I think we need to learn to communicate a little better, otherwise, we're doomed from the start. I absolutely intend to spend the rest of my life with you, and it's hard to speak with someone else's tongue in your mouth so I stopped trying. We didn't immediately fall into bed and have wild makeup and intimate, this happened the next morning. Mostly we hugged and talked. The conversation turned to children, and I said that I would like to have at least two, and she laughed. I am the youngest of five, mom is the third oldest of seven, and dad has four brothers and three sisters. I don't think I need that many, but four is a good round number. She moved in with me the following week, so by the time we got married, we were practically an established couple. I returned to work after a call from the executive vice president at headquarters. I'm waiting for you at work on Monday. Reggie told me what happened, and I'm reading between the lines a little. I can assure you that from now on, your personal life will remain private. The future is yours, Al. Reggie is retiring in two years, and we have already decided that you will take his place. I'm also giving you a 5% raise to show how serious I am. Now go back to work. My relationship with Reggie never recovered, but he and I got along. Reggie was given a big send-off when he retired, and I was just settling into my new office when a grinning Gladys walked in. I took her with me, increasing my salary in connection with new responsibilities. I already knew that smirk, she knows something I don't, and she's about to burst. Your wife is here. Should I let her in? Just for fun, I should have told you not to let go but it won't end well. 
I wondered what this was for. If Bunte wants to see me, she usually just comes in. She came in, and both mothers were with her, and it scared me. She grinned, relax, dear. I hope the news is good. I just returned from the doctor, we're having a baby in seven months. You will be holding your son or daughter, or maybe both, there are twins in our family. I almost fainted. We tried for a whole year, and after eight months, we went for tests. Her doctor told us, your swimmers can get to the Olympics, Al, Alicia, if you were even more fertile, you could grow crops in your womb. You guys just need to relax. Your first child is about to arrive, and now they are here. Yes, her family actually had twins, and now ours too. The mothers were in seventh heaven, and Alicia cried her eyes out when we handed them over to her. She could still have children, but the window was closing, and after the cruel twist of fate, she became much more careful in relationships. Bunta took all the maternity leave she could, and when it ended, she simply didn't return to work. We could easily afford it, and it seems that this is the best way. If things got too hard for her and she felt overwhelmed, one of the moms would immediately give her a break. One day, when the twins were almost a year old, we ran into Juliet on the street. I was pushing the first-class double stroller that my mother had given us, and Buntai walked beside me, holding my hand. She looked at Buntai, at the kids, and at me, and then burst into tears. I suspect she regretted the missed opportunities. Buntai asked who she was, and then smiled sadly, whoever didn't have time is late. I think she now regrets that she didn't make the best choice, but her time has passed. Now, you are mine, and nothing will ever change that. Mom was still close to Juliet and loved Tony and Mark very much. Sometimes she left them at her place for the weekend, and they always ended up at my house. And if the weather was right, we almost always went fishing. I still threw their birthday parties, starting them again the second year after Juliet and I broke up. As they got older, they and their friends would stay overnight, and it always included catfishing. Juliet would come to the party and then disappear as soon as it ended. She had been in a relationship, even married a guy she dated for a week, but it ended after about 18 months, and she seemed to have given up the search. Although I was still working from home, I was promoted to become a regional manager in charge of four sites. The salary increase was pretty good, and we put most of it in the bank, using some of it to fund college funds. I just received my first annual bonus for a new position, and it was enough to shock me. I had a Bermuda vacation planned for the first week of February that included both mothers, Hyam, and Addie. We enjoyed the sun and sand, played with the little ones on the beach, helped them build sandcastles, and held them in our arms while the warm waves splashed at their feet. The mothers stayed at home, and Buntai, Addie, and I visited a couple of clubs. Motherhood benefited Buntai by enlarging her breasts. Adele was 31 by then, still slim still beautiful, and still had a killer butt. They often pestered her, she smiled, danced with a guy if she liked him, but she rejected most of them. One became quite aggressive and did not let go of her hand. I think the look on my face told him it was a bad idea, but really, he should have been watching Buntai. Her legs were tiny, but I bet it hurt like hell when she inserted her dignity right into it. He deflated like a balloon running out of air as Buntai and Addie watched him with wide grins on their faces. We soon left, and he was still lying on the floor, apparently, he doesn't have many friends. The ladies gave me a surprise by leaving Hyam and me with the kids while they spent the day shopping, dining, and briefly relaxing on the beach topless. It was after dinner and four drinks, and they forgot the sunblock. They came in giggling and snuggling, gave me lots of kisses, and went straight to bed. The next day, I noticed that they were not feeling well, and found out that they were all slightly burned. Our hotel has a private beach, so the first thing they did after lunch was take off their tops and apply sunblock. They laughed at my expression and then blushed when I told the moms that they still had it, and Adele was just as impressive as I always imagined her to be. Bunta looked a little annoyed until I picked her up and held her close, the other lady screamed as she ran into the ocean, with them right behind her. I'm sure there was talk at the country club. Hyam just stood there with his mouth open. I bet the girls at the country club faced some backlash and rumors about their tanning spread. Many ladies ended up demanding a vacation somewhere in the sun, preferably without clothes. 
The children had just turned three years old and were trying to prove that perpetual motion was not just a theory. I was on an overnight business trip to one of the manufacturing plants because several problems had arisen there and it was starting to affect production. The problem turned out to be management and I ended up staying an extra night to put out the fire. I fired the assistant manager for inappropriate actions and conversations with his employees, both men and women. Some of them knew that if it came to complaints, it would be their word against his, and they recorded some of them on tape. I listened to one of them, then escorted him out of the building and forbade him to appear on the territory. I called the administrator on duty and the leading specialist, and then left. I always called home every day, and I called in the morning when I was leaving to tell Buntai when I would be home. But the call went to voicemail, this happened from time to time, so it didn't bother me too much. What bothered me was the number of cars in my driveway. I ended up parking on the street, it was full of friends and relatives, and I thought it was some kind of surprise party. Then mom and Addie appeared with red eyes and in tears. It was stupid, pointless, and it took me a long time to come to terms with. Mom came to pick up the children and took them shopping with her. She mostly did this to give Buntai some rest during the day. We bought a new boat, and she decided to take the time to clean it while she could. It was the beginning of March, and the day turned out to be warm, although the wind was quite gusty. Her mother found her floating face down in the water near the pier. When she pulled her ashore, it became clear that it was too late. But she immediately called 911 and performed chest compressions until paramedics arrived. The doctors did everything they could, but it was too late. The official cause of death was drowning, she had a sizable bruise on her forehead, and authorities believed that a gust of wind had caused her to fall from the boat, hit her head on the side or dock, and drowned in an unconscious state. I barely remember that time, there was a large crowd at the funeral. Buntai was very popular in the community, and I was a prominent figure in business circles. I don't think anyone came to the funeral for business reasons, but rather to show their support. She was 30 years old when she died. It was two weeks before I was back at work and probably three months before I was back at full capacity. But senior management didn't say a word. The vice president, who had so much faith in me, begged me to go to counseling, saying the company would pay for it. Addie practically dragged me to the sessions, but after five, I managed to cope with everything. Both mothers took turns caring for Johnny and Carol, and Adele came every day. I ended up decorating her bedroom because she stayed at my place three to four times a week to look after me and spend time with the kids. One day, almost a year later, I asked if she was tired of us, and she surprised me by bursting into tears. Mom seemed to be unhappy too. Two years later, I surprised Addie by telling her we were going to the Christmas dance at the country club. She seemed hesitant and asked if I would like to go with someone else who might interest me romantically. The look on her face was priceless when I replied that that was why I was taking her with me. She burst into tears and ran into her bedroom, slamming the door. I sat on the sofa and tried to understand how I could misunderstand her. Poor thing. The door opened, and she sat down next to me, almost timidly. Are you sure, absolutely? I've always admired you, Addie, and I don't just mean physically. You are one of the kindest people I have ever met. You help friends, family, even complete strangers if you think they deserve it. We have always loved each other as friends. It was just bad timing and serious insecurities on my part that prevented us from being together. A smile played on her lips. Lack of confidence. You always scared me a little. Your brains, not to mention your beauty, put you out of my league. I felt like I could never be enough for you. But as the British say, no risk, no win. So I finally plucked up the courage to tell you how I feel. I love my first wife, and I loved Bunte much more, but she is no more and the morning is over. Are you here? You are the only mother the children know, and they love you, maybe even more than I do. I can't imagine my future life without you. Maybe you'll think about it. I almost lost consciousness from the kiss, allowing me to finally take a breath of air. She smiled. On reflection, I think you may be right. So I have a proposal for you, as for us. Let me think this through. Yes, we will go to the old ball, and grandma will keep our babies for the night. We will never sleep in different beds again, understand? Now is the time to start practicing saying, yes, honey, yes dear, good boy.
Let's practice some more, okay? Will you ever give me a ring? Yes, dear, soon, yes, dear. One last thing before we end this conversation. We're not getting any younger, and although we love twins, I think we need to have another baby soon. Yes, dear, you are such a good boy. Now, before I call your mom and tell her the news she's been wanting to hear for a year, I think you should practice kissing. Agree? Yes, darling. Mom was in seventh heaven, and plans began to be made immediately. I thought Buntaya's parents would be a little awkward, so I called her mom. I heard a grin in my voice. I already know everything, fool. We are happy for you, and this is exactly what our daughter would have liked to see, you with the one you love. Your mom and I have everything under control, so don't worry. I know that Addie's parents passed away, so we decided to adopt her. I will serve as the mother of the bride, and hubby will walk her down the aisle. Your little ones will be the flower girl and ring bearer. Well, Buntaya's two brothers were the best men. As I stood at the altar that May afternoon and watched Addie float down the aisle with our children in front, dressed up in a pretty dress and little suit, I knew I would never be happier than this minute. What made it even better was that under the dress, a two-month bulge was revealed. The doctor decided that there might be twins there. What do you think of our story today? It seems to me that the wife is completely wrong, and she should not have done that to her husband, and the husband, on the contrary, is very much improved at the end of the story, having learned to forgive. What's your opinion? Write in the comments. Until new videos.